Hey, what's up, family? Back at it again. It's been, a, it's been a minute since I put out a video, but I definitely wanted to put out a video showing how I um, do my production using certain tools or these two particular, two particular tools. Uh, one is by Output called Arcade, and the other one is by UJAM. Um, it's the uh, drum software uh, that I like to use that they have, so I, and they have some pretty good sounding um, tools there. So um, let's just go ahead and dive on into Cubase, um, and I'll show y'all the production that I did. It was this RB track that I did via Cubase, only using arcades, I mean, output arcade and UJAM's um, drum software. Uh, they have a lot on that. You can check on their website, like one called Glory. That's the one I'm using, one called Glory. Then they have pop and K-pop and all those different types of genres specific um, to work with whatever you're trying to do in your project. So sit back, relax, and check it out. So what I'm using is Arcade, and I'm using UJAM software. So I'll put Arcade up so you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Um, this is an instance of Arcade here. And this is what I made. This is where I made all the production out of here. And regarding the drums would be here. Okay, just waiting that pull up. And this is UJAM software. And this uh, is called Glory. This drum software is called Glory. And this is where I, you know, make the, you know, the beats and stuff in the rhythm that I do here. All right. So what I did basically did, I just wanted to use Arcade and UJAM to make this R&B track. And so I asked, that's what I did. <laughs> so I made this track via Cubase. You can look at the MIDI data here. So basically what I did, um, I used the samples that's in arcade and um, I didn't mangle them, mangle them anything. I definitely changed the key from the original key and I just made it to where I see fit. Um, so I chopped a little bit certain things and I use, you know, the rhythms, the rit actual the melodic playing, but I'd use it in a way that I like to use it to kind of somewhat make it mine. All right. So, um, Let's go with the intro, start and just play the intro. And again, you can see um, what, where I'm using an arcade Okay, let's let's come up and here's the um, the samples that I'm using it's called honey and I just you know use certain samples here you can hear see the samples here and I just use them in the way that I like to use them in the production okay and I might not use the full sample I might use some of it in certain parts all right and Let's go into the uh, first verse. Okay, so that's the first verse and you can see the arrangement here what I did so I took some I took the samples and I used certain samples um, to create the first verse um, I created the drum pattern from UJAM software which you can see here the drum pattern here and these are the other samples this MIDI is triggering triggering um, via arcade outputs arcade software so as you can see the first verse here and then we go here at this bar uh, what we see is um, a pre-chorus. So I made a pre-chorus. So I use other samples 
uh, in that particular uh, bundle that they had uh, regarding, I think it was called Honey or something like that. So I used that for my um, pre-core. So the pre-core basically, um, it'll take it over to the bridge to transfer it to the, to the bridge to that next level. So let's listen to it going into the, uh, not the bridge, I'm sorry, the chorus. So it transferred to the chorus. So let's listen to it and go into the chorus. same samples but I'm just using in a different arrangement regarding the chorus to give that different feel for the chorus uh, the cool thing what I like about arcade I like this thing called notes so it's actually acting acting as a uh, instrument and you can play which I did here on this track played the bass and let me put it up on arcade and pull this pull up arcade as you can see here the bass line um, but instead of samples I'm actually playing the notes so this is the note section of you know if I if I press uh, this button you'll hear me play so I can actually play the bass and that's exactly what I did in in this song here in the verses and the choruses so I love that that arcade uh, actually upgraded and update updated to that and it was pretty cool and I thought that was a great idea that they did to give us that opportunity to make that choice if we want to play something that we might want to play. So that's the chorus. Again, the verse repeats itself here. And again, the chorus is here. Um, and then I changed it up a little bit. Let's go to the third. All right, so I'm, I'm going to play the chorus and then it's going to the third verse. And then show you what I did. As you can see in the third verse it's a little bit different the hi-hats are moving a little faster you know at a different different steps than it was in the previous uh, verses also you know I cut out certain um, you know rhythms and in, in, in the verse to just make it different so it doesn't sound again predictable or just same thing all the way through make some differences in it you know um, then it goes back into the pre-chord and I went back to the original drums here. And if you notice you hear some horns um, in this section here and the horns I got of course out of arcade as well. Uh, let's pull it up. I think it's called the 70s horns or something like that. I mean, I'm sorry, the 70s. So I just pretty much used some of the samples in here. And I just used them as I sing fit and where they needed to go. Um, you know, you just use your ears and you can match things up, you know, so where they go. And of course, the key is in D major. So I kept it in D major. The original key. Uh, keys were uh, different whatever you know the sample has its original key but I like to keep everything of course in the same key that you're making the song in so which makes sense 
So that's pretty much it on this production. I just wanted to show you guys how I use um, Arcade. Uh, I know everybody's ramming about it. You see it all on YouTube, which is some great software. But this is how, or uh, one of the ways that I use it. Sometimes I import my own samples into Arcade. I love that about that. You can do that, which makes it more powerful. So that's it. And the next thing I'm going into the mixing, and I'll show you how I mix this thing and, you know, make it sound nice and polished and, you know, ready to go. See ya. All right, back to the mix side of things. Let's check out a few things. So basically, I'm mixing this song, you know, working on the mix. Let's uh, get this out of here right here. All right, as you can see in this little mixer section below, here's my uh, drum kit. And this is coming from the U-Jam Glory uh, drum software. And this section here is the instruments. And then we go over to the right some more. Um, what we will see, the drum bus, which I have all the drum kit routed to this um, aux sin here, or oh, this uh, bus channel to this drum bus channel here. So all the drums are going here. And instruments as well. Another note, um, I am summing into a external um, summing box or a summing mixer. So that is doing my summing instead of the um, DAW doing the summing. And I'm using a PM8. Uh, this was by Black Lion Audio at the time. They're, they stopped making them. Uh, um, I still use it. Um, still think it's a, a very cool device. And I'll show a picture of it up in just a second. Here are my um, audio channels, obviously. Um, what I did when I summed all the audio channels here into one stereo channel, which is coming from, which uh, went through the uh, PM8, and this is the um, stereo channel right here. Okay, so let's take a look at the, um, well, let's look at a few channels and show you um, a few things that I did is regarding like plugins. I use SSL plugins. I have the um, the solid state, the uh, SSL UC1 um, controller. So I'm actually controlling, instead of bringing up the instance of the plugin, I could just use my controller and do everything so I don't have to be looking at the screen and just focus more on you know my ears using my ears so these are some of the channels and uh, I don't have them on every single channel um, I just wanted it on the channels that I need them on so yeah these are the channels here um, I use you know let's see I used uh, um, the saturated X on a few channels that I thought needed a little saturation on. And I didn't use the EQ on all the channels if I didn't need it. If, you know, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But if I did, it was there just in case. Okay. Um, just a little padding on some of the Rhodes keyboards that I use as far as plugins. Let's see what we got here. Again, Saturator X or X Saturator from SSL. Um, on my drum bus, I use this Shadow Hills compressor uh, by uh, Brainworks. Um, I really like that sound. You could use three different um, transformer um, transformer um, sounds or different transformer function. Iron, nickel, and it looks like steel. 
they all have little different sounds. Um, I, I like this one. Um, brought out the uh, drums. Um, a little more punchy, beefier. Uh, pretty good compressor. Um, you know, not too much to say about it. <laughs> Typical compressor. Great for what it needs to do. Okay. And that's on the drum bus, obviously. And on instruments... Um, I didn't really, I just put a saturator on there, just to thicken things up. That's it. Didn't do too much, you know, not too much of anything because the sounds are already nice coming from Arcade and U-Jam. So I wanted to kind of keep that sound as much as I could. So I just um, did adjustments here and there. Let's take a look at the um, stereo bus. Or the stereo out channel. I have a few plugins on this thing here. Uh, let's go through them. Obviously, I got my bus compressor on here to get my little what we call glue, and these are my settings here to get that glue. And the reason why I chose these settings because I don't want much of the low end affected. So you, I would have you know a very slow attack and a um, slow release so a lot of the transits a lot of transients can come through okay uh, let's take a look at um, the SSL uh, fusion uh, this is from a box that SSL actually created and it what they did was they broke down the box into individual like I think five four or five individual plugins and here we have your violet EQ uh, let's see what we got here. And we have the um, vintage drive. I use that. And uh, the high frequency uh, compressor. And the stereo image. Okay. And uh, let's see. The transformer. And here's another little plug in. It's, I like to use just to bring back some of that low end that I wanted or beef, beef it up a little more. So, yeah, these are the plugins that I use on the stereo bus. Um, I like the sound of the fusion. Uh, I guess this would be the closest I can get to the fusion until I get me a actual, the real hardware, <laughs> which I want to get, I would love to get, and I will eventually get. For now, I just have to stick with these plugins. <laughs> All right. Now, down here is like a little mastering plugin, but I like to use it um, just to give it a little more. I'm not mastering or anything, just adding a little more oomph and taking out things, a little cutting and boosting here and there. So, this is uh, a plugin by Together Audio called Rich. Really cool mastering plugin. Um, you can check it out. Um, has a. Um, Really cool features if you go over to the expert and you can dev in more of the parameters in this plugin, uh, which is cool. It has an imager, um, you can check in mono here and there, you know, to see what, what, what your um, device sound like in mono. Okay, now I'll take it back to simple. So, pretty much, that's really it that I did in the mix. I did a little automation. Didn't really need to, needed to do a lot of automation. Um, and that's, you know, just really pretty much it. You know, what I, I have my little steps that I go through, obviously, um, when I first bring up my uh, session, you know, I like to do all my color coding and arranging the tracks, getting them all in order and gain staging, of course. So there's some things that I do and do all, all of my routing, like routing all, all of my tracks out into the uh, PM8 external um, mixer. And that's it. So this is this bad boy playing right here. Let's just play it.
let's take a listen. Uh, we'll do a bypass on the stereo bus and see what it sounds like without all those plugins on the stereo bus. Let's take a listen to that. All right, so I'm going to bypass the stereo bus. All the plugins will be, um, they won't be enabled, they will be disengaged. Let's play it. Okay, so obviously you could hear the difference um, from the plugins being disabled and enabled. Big difference, bring out a lot of clarity with stereo width and so forth. And that's pretty much it. So that is the mix of this cool little song that I use only Arcade and UJAM software. Thanks. Uh, to Arcade and UJAM. However, I'm not affiliated with these guys or anything. I just like using the um, software. I think it's pretty good software for both of them. I am going to purchase more of the UJAM um, beat uh, uh, beat sounds. Like I know they had, I want that pop one that they have out there and the little candy pop. and It just sounds just right for the music or genre that you're trying to create so that being said i am going to close out this thing please like subscribe and comment and i will see you guys again in the next video have a good one